So going forward, I'm going to format these videos a little differently. Because of the ADHD inherently within this show, I've found it necessary to organize the story by the people involved. We'll start with staff, then we work our way down to guests. The recap goes the same as always, more nonsense about the last episode, blah blah blah, let's just get this started. Is the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. I gotta go to work. Tom, you drive so slow, you wanna just go now. So, Tim and Tom, being rich and evidently bored, despite the fact that they own a multi-million dollar casino hotel, speed down the highway to their hotel casino for a $5,000 bet. They rip up the road in their overpriced but pretty badass sports cars, and Tim beats Tom. Instead of paying Tim, Tom beats around the bush about the measly 5k, even though I'm certain he made that in the hour before filming. You're crazy. Where's my money? You and that go car of yours, you know. Give me my money. That's so out of line. Aside from their discount need for speed nonsense, Tim and Tom don't do much this episode. That's disappointing. They usually have some insightful things to say about the casino before the actual nonsense starts. Tim talks to our young dealer friend, Tommy Sundstrom, and arranges another interview to make up for the one they missed last meeting. So I appreciate them showing some humility and integrity to their employees, although Tommy really hasn't quite earned that yet. I'll get together with you. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, okay. Tom. You bye -bye. bye Now on to the guests. So our focus guests tonight are two young ladies driving in from what I automatically assume is California. They're here to make a ton of money to pay off a Porsche that Yulisha has just purchased. The Porsche's name is Kushina Uzumaki or something, or is that Naruto's mom? I legitimately can't remember at this point, but she's joining us for the episode. You watch her like it. your life is Not a problem, we'll take care <laughs> of it for What's your name? It. Julian. And this is Porsche Delaquince, okay? All right, Miss James, we'll take care of it for you. right upstairs, baby. Meanwhile, Brian is here in Las Vegas with his family. He brings his wife, and two young sons to Las Vegas. And that way, myself and my wife get a vacation here and then get enough money to go to Disney later with the boys. In order to gamble the family vacation budget to make enough for a trip to Disney World. They're in the super high roller suite that we saw the whales in last episode. Yeah, big. Yeah. Disney's next. Vegas, obviously B-Man is here. So Tommy eventually shows up and has his date with Tim Poster to try and weasel his way out of the pit. His boss Monique is not impressed, much like me, but Tim doesn't give a fuck, so he kicks the kid an internship. Probably because Tommy's dad is a host and he figures like father, like son. So I'm thinking of letting you intern as a host, but you gotta do this on your own time and it cannot interfere with your time as a dealer. Tommy goes back to the floor to fight with his boss some more. Monique hits the nail on the head with the whole daddy got me the job bit, but Tommy won't give her the satisfaction. Good for him, I guess. And good for her, I guess, because let's be real, that is why he got the audience in the first place. Also, there are cameras following him. Aside from that, is it just me or is there some weird belligerent sexual tension between these two? Back to Yulisha. She meets a psychic in the gym. The psychic is named Justine. Or Sabrina. No, definitely Justine. Anyway, she does magic, which just really sounds like her giving bad, vague advice. It kind of reminds me of that episode of South Park where they made fun of psychics. Oh, goodness, what's going on? Stand back, mother. We're having a telekinetic battle of men. Personally, the only psychic I like to mess with is Mewtwo. As a result of her encounter, Yulisha wins some money at the table. She just so happens to meet the Lorenz family while Brian and his wife are playing roulette. Brian and Felicia aren't so lucky, so they recruit the psychic for a meeting. And this is right after Justine got a confessional. Good lord, she's a main character now too. Also, there's a little bit where the kids have their own Vegas experience. It's geared or whatever, they eat a bunch of dessert. It doesn't actually advance the plot anyway, but at least they aren't being incomprehensible assholes. Their father, on the other hand, doesn't impress me. He's already committed two critical Vegas sins. Number one, don't bring kids to Vegas. And number two, don't use Vegas to solve your money woes. The kids I can let slide because there's stuff for them to do, but yeah, you don't promise your family a vacation and decide to throw it through a slot machine or on a roulette table. It's not right. The next morning, Tommy starts his first aid internship. And because we haven't met a whale today, we get Steve. Steve? gives Tommy a lot of trouble, and Tommy doesn't know what to do about it because it's his first day. If something goes wrong, it's your fault. Hit me with the ice, come on! We also get a little bit of hosting advice, but it's mostly just footage of Steve the Whale being drunk and silly. Hey. Hi there! How's it going? Concerning more silliness, Justine is back, and she tells Brian that gambling with his family is bad luck, and that he shouldn't be trying to gamble his way into a Disney vacation. Because whether she's a real psychic or not, 
Justine isn't a jackass. Brian, trying to gamble his way into a family vacation, is a jackass and needs to stop. Windows? Okay, windows? Uh, On the flip side, we get to see Matt Dusk again. It just so happens that Ulysha and... Joan? June? Jude? Ulysha and her friend are watching their favorite Canadian crooner, who just so happens to be our favorite Canadian crooner, Matt Dusk. So you guys will remember last time that he didn't care much for having fans on the stage. We sing of key. Well, this time he's determined to explain why it's a bad idea to Joe. Ulysha is excited because Matt Dusk is pretty, can sing, Canadian, and is willing to put her on stage. Matt expects this to be more karaoke BS, so he decides to be a literal genie in Grant and Ulysha's request to spite Joe. I meet this really cool young lady who's got this vibe of like a young Aretha Franklin, and I'm the one putting her up on stage to sing. Luckily, not only is Ulysha pretty, but she can also sing. So we got to see some kind of cool entertainment operations here, and it's a nice treat that Ulysha is actually a good singer. In fact, Matt's agent gets Ulysha's card. In my research, I haven't found Ulysha doing any more R&B or anything like that, so if you found anything in the comment section, let me know below. Her story ends here. She didn't make her money, but she may or may not have broken into the music industry. So, if she did, awesome and good for her. Okay, enough jumping around, let's go ahead and wrap up the stories here. Brian and his family get together and go to the Stratosphere, because the top of it's an amusement park and it's kid-friendly. It's not Disney, but at least Brian has come to his senses and isn't gambling on a Disney trip now. Though I do wonder if Fox paid them enough to take the Disney trip anyway. A good time is had by all, they hug or whatever, then they go the way of Jen and the frat boys. What's fun? Where are we going next? Disney World! We'll get to Disney. It's not going to be now, you know, but it'll be in the future. So how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for coming down. I didn't think you were going to show up. Also, Tommy's going to finish his story. He's at the table dealing to this friend of his. Tommy explicitly states that she's not his girlfriend in a confessional, but also has to make the point that he's banged her a few times because Tommy's such a class act. Either way, it's a clear conflict of interest. Monique catches Tommy dealing and staring at Alexis's chest and has the floor manager pull him aside. Then he ends up in Dee's office. Close the door and sit down. Dee chews Tommy's ass out over breaking policy. He also threatens to fire him, but because Tommy is daddy's boy and of course daddy is Dee's best friend, he's gonna let him off with a warning. His internship doesn't get pulled, there are no additional consequences, he keeps his job, same shift, no dock and pay, whatever. And that's just kind of where Tommy's story peters out. I'm not sure if he learned a lesson or not, but, you know, nothing terrible happened to him, so I'm happy about that. Dane, how you doing? Tom. Tom? How are you? And finally, Tim and Tom return just in time to meet the psychic. They ask her vaguely about a big business deal. She gives some vague advice, and then the episode kind of ends there. There's a little bit of a cliffhanger where Tim and Tom agree to a second bet, this time over cards, but we won't find out how that goes until next time. And that's episode four of The Casino. Has it gotten better? Yes and no. The storylines are interesting, I guess, but there are too many of them for this episode, and they didn't have a lot of substance. Tim and Tom all but get lost in this episode, and Tommy was the actual lifeline about learning about casino stuff. Also, I don't think we needed to focus on two sets of guests in addition to Matt Dusk. It just seemed like they needed an episode for the week, and this is what they slapped together. Weakest episode of the series so far, I'm afraid. Hopefully episode 5 gets better. Alright then, Spinners and Sharks, that's all the time we have for today's video. If you enjoyed today's review and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like. And consider subscribing if you haven't already. Next week, we'll take on episode 5 of the casino in between those fresh Vegas vlogs. Until next time, though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, and I'm wishing you all strong hands, and, of course, happy spinning, you guys.